Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Esculenta Science. If you are new to here and want to learn about the food processing technology, please hit the subscribe followed by the bell. Today we are going to talk about non-enzymic browning or Maillard reaction. In 1912, a French chemist, Louis Camille Maillard, introduced Maillard reactions. The common browning of foods on heating or during storage is usually due to a chemical reaction between reducing sugars, mainly D-glucose and a primary amino group that means a free amino acids or amino group on the side chain of a protein molecule. This reaction is called the Maillard reaction and the overall process is sometimes designated Maillard browning. It is also called non-enzymic or non-enzymatic browning to differentiate it from enzyme-catalyzed browning commonly observed in freshly cut fruits and vegetables such as apples and potatoes. When aldoses or ketoses are heated with amines, a variety of reactions ensue, producing numerous compounds, some of which are flavors, aromas, and dark colored polymeric materials. But both reactants disappear slowly. The generated flavors, aromas, and colors may be either desirable and important for some foods or unintended and undesirable in others. They may be produced slowly during storage or much more rapidly at the high temperatures encountered during frying, roasting or baking. Good examples of foods in which desirable colors, flavors and aromas are formed by Maillard browning reactions are French fries and baked breads, most probably within the outer crust in both cases. In short, the Maillard reaction can be considered as a multifaceted reaction occurring in three primary stages. The first one is initial condensation of a carbonyl compound, for an example reducing sugar, with an amine followed by a series of reactions leading to formation of amadori product. And the second one is rearrangement, dehydration, decomposition and or reaction of amadori intermediates to form furfural compounds, reductants, dehydroreductants and stricter degradation products. Then the final one is reaction of Maillard intermediary products to form heterocyclic flavor compounds and red or brown to black colored high molecular weight melanodine pigments. I have mentioned these three steps in details in the description. The Maillard product mixture formed in the function of temperature, time, pH, the nature of reducing sugar and the nature of the amino compound for the following reasons. Different sugars undergo non-enzymic browning at different rates. The reactivity of the carbonyl group differs according to the following rules. Aldoses are generally more reactive with amino acids than are ketoses, while alpha-dicarbonyl compounds are even more reactive than aldoses. However, some studies have shown that D-fructose undergoes a myelite browning reaction faster than D-glucose. The sucrose is a non reducing sugar. It may be degraded to fructose and glucose during heating and still measurably contribute to myelin browning reactions. Amino compounds exhibit variable reactivity according to their basicity. 
ammonium ions react with radiation sugars more readily than amines, while secondary amines give different reaction products than primary amines. While proteins, peptides, and amino acids may all participate in the Maillard reaction. The rate of the Maillard reaction is also a function of the water activity of a food product, reaching a maximum at water activity values in the range 0.6 to 0.7. Thus, for some foods, Maillard browning can be controlled by controlling water activity as well as by controlling reactant concentration time, temperature, and pH. Sulfur dioxide and bisulfide ions react with aldehyde groups forming addition compounds and thus will inhibit myelite browning by removing at least some of reactant. For an example, radiation sugar, HMF, furfural, etc. Reaction variables that can be controlled to increase the or decrease the Maillard browning reaction are the following. Temperature. Decreasing the temperature decreases the reaction rate and also the time at the temperature is very important. Also the pH. Decreasing the pH decreases the reaction rate. And the third one is adjustment of the water content. Maximum reaction rate occurs at water activity values of 0.6 to 0.7. That means around 30% moisture content. The specific sugar also a variable to maintain the reaction rate. And the fifth one is the presence of transition metal ions that undergo a one electron oxidation under energetically favorable conditions, such as ferrous copper ions. A free radical reaction may be involved near the end of the pigments forming process. In summary, Maillard browning products, including soluble and insoluble polymers, are formed where radiation sugars and amino acids, proteins, and other nitrogen containing compounds are heated together. For an example, soy sauce and bread crust. Browning is desired in baking and roasting of meats. The volatile compounds produced by non-enzymic browning or the Maillard reaction during baking, frying or roasting often provide desirable aromas. Maillard reaction products are also important contribute to the flavor of milk chocolate, caramels, toffees, fudges in which radiation sugars react with milk proteins. The Maillard reaction also produces flavors, especially bitter substances, which may be desired in coffee production. On the other hand, the Maillard reaction can result in off flavors and off aromas, which are commonly produced during the ultra high temperature pasteurization of milk, storage of dehydrated foods, and grilling of meat or fish. Application of heat to intermediate moisture foods is generally required for non-enzymic browning joker. So, this is the brief overview of Maillard reaction on non-enzymatic browning. You can read the description to get more details regarding these reactions. Also, you can search further through books and research papers or any other online sources. If you found this video useful, please give it thumbs up and subscribe for videos just like this. Hope to catch you next time with a new lesson and thanks for watching.